You're watching Esports Center, and we're back covering the ECAC Esports Summer Valent Tournament. We got a couple players here from Sacramento State. One of them, Nick Palsgaard, aka Dragslap, and he's got a great, awesome, interesting story to share with us today mm -hmm. and his esports trajectory and journey. Excited to hear from you today, Nick. We also have Harish Kadaswamy. Kadis AKA Omi, which is a little bit easier to say. Omi, thank you so much for joining us as well. You're one of the team members on at the Sacramento State Esports Club. So we're excited to hear book from both of you today. What's going on, guys? Good. We just got done finishing one of the ECAC's uh, Valorant tournaments. Super, super fun. We performed pretty well. So we had a great time playing today. That's awesome. How about you, Omi? Are you feeling good? Yeah, it was a fun tournament. We got two really good victories, and I'm proud of our guys. Sweet. Well, you know what, guys? I want to hear all the details about how you kicked butt and took names during the ECAC uh, Valorant tournament. <laughs> but before we get there, I want to learn a little bit more about your background, where you guys are coming from. Nick, I know that Sacramento State is fairly young in their esports club, started mm -hmm. back in 2017. I know that you actually started the club itself. So tell me a little bit about what led you to the point in your esports video gaming journey to where you're now uh, creating and running a club at Sacramento State. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I saw um, many Californian schools, such as UC Irvine is a great example, um, that basically create a full on varsity program with full ride scholarships and they basically perform at the highest um, competitive level for various video game titles. And I just wanted something like that at Sac State. So the starter club at Sac State, you just need your, yourself and four of your favorite friends. And then you're able to start a club, you get a room assigned to you for your weekly meetings. And then from there, we just market the heck out of our club from boothing and just basically literally just yelling at people to join us. <laughs> <laughs> So. And I'm sure it doesn't take much to get people to join you guys. You guys went from, what, 20 players when you first started to now over 400? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a lot of people involved just in our community. Like, not everyone's a roster player, but we have so many people involved with our stream, our marketing. Uh, and just everyone just likes hanging out with each other and just being involved with this new esport community that's growing. That's really cool. So you guys have a lot of different support and engagement from not just the gamers, but other people across mm -hmm. the student body to support your needs, like the streaming and the media, yes. broadcasting, things like this. Very cool. Omi, tell me about you and your experience. How long have you been on the on the team with with Sacramento State Esports Club? Yeah, so for the, uh, the official Esports Club, it was actually formed midway through the fall 2019 semester, I believe. And that was when I joined um, and yeah, like I told you, I originally, originally joined with the uh, Overwatch team because I was a, a big Overwatch player before I came to the club. And cool. I figured... What, uh, what took you to Overwatch to Valorant? Are they similar for you? Do you enjoy them both? Oh yeah, I was just kind of getting tired of Overwatch because there's a lot of like... On, there's not, like, there's not a, like a lot of good patches that came out recently for Overwatch. I ended yeah. up uh, messing up with the balancing of the characters. And then Valorant came out, so I decided to say, hey, might as well try out this new game. And I ended up liking it, so I decided to join the Valorant team from there. That's really cool. That's one exciting thing I think you get in eSports that you don't get in traditional sports. Like, if you get tired of football or a single position, you don't necessarily get the luxury to switch mm -hmm. it up much, unless you start yeah. to learn a, a different position on the field, right, or mm -hmm. the court. But with eSports, if you get tired of one game, it gets repetitive for you, you feel like you've mastered it, you, there's tons of other games out there you can start to tackle and it's like starting over again. Is that how you yeah, guys definitely. feel? Yeah, mm definitely. -hmm. It's nice to but, get a change of pace every once in a while. So, you know, Nick, I, I'm just dying to dive into just a little bit more. You talked about the eSports club, but what was your trajectory to getting to this point? Like, what was the history uh, for you in video gaming? When did you start? Um. So how I kind of just got into it is um, kind of in high school, I just really like playing competitive uh, video games mostly. I like just be able to say I can actually beat other people at something. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm the most athletic person, but, um, and then especially when you take it to a collegiate level, um, just being able to officially beat other college campuses, it just gets such a, like you get really excited with it. 
Yeah, like the competition pool you guys have with ECAC, I'm sure is like really expanded your your mm -hmm. world when it comes to esports. Yes. What is that like for you to be able to compete against the best players all over the state it's, or the US? It's super exciting because we've been, we played a few amount of tournaments in the West Coast. So it's really uh, nice to see um, different teams and different players. You kind of run into the same players and same teams after like a few years playing in the West Coast. So it's nice to basically play other teams and see how everyone else plays. That's cool. Is this your first tournament with the ECAC or have you guys, um, you know, familiar with the rodeo, not your first one? This so is our second one, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our first one was a couple weeks ago and we got to second place in that one, actually. It was a fun experience. Awesome. So second place in that tournament. And how did you fare? Let's just go ahead and dive in. How did you fare in today's tournament? <laughs> We did, we did really good. Our first two matches, we did phenomenal on. Um, there's this thing called uh, basically a flawless victory where you're just, you played perfectly and beat the other team. And we finally got one of those uh, for the Sac State team. And I made a bet with the team that if they got a 13, if we got a flawless victory, I would buy the whole team Denny's. And so we finally got that today. Heaven, 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 oh. heaven last one. Nice! Yes. Yes. 13 yes. oh baby! <laughs> yes! Yes! Let's Dude, get it. So at the end of the match, we were screaming, just Denny's. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that's all it takes, huh? To brand yep. new guys yep. Denny's. Okay, first, a couple of questions. One, what is a flawless victory? So uh, the flawless victory is basically, uh, it's a set of rounds. So think of points in like a ping pong game or tennis, like, like the 40 love. It's basically um, first one to 13 and we were able to beat a team 13 to zero. Nice. So in other words, you went undefeated. Cause like if I, I was watching it tonight, the Valorant match or the Valorant games, they have multiple um, rounds, right? Just kind of yes. like in boxing. So yes. if, those multiple rounds you win all of them you went, in essence went undefeated in non-gaming yes. terms right yeah yeah exactly that's pretty cool so omi how what did you think about your performance in the game were you happy with it i mean obviously the outcome was great but there's always like room to reflect and and think about what you did really well that you're proud of versus what you would like to improve on what was it like for you in this tournament yeah i think uh, i actually started off a little bit cold today um, I think I wasn't hitting quite as many shots as I would have liked. But, you know, over the course of the day, you start getting those kills, you start getting warmed up, you start being able to hit more of your shots. And it's just a matter of, you know, trying to get adjusted to your environment, um, trying to get adjusted to your teammates and, like, making sure you guys are on the same page in terms of your strats. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, this is a 5v5 game. So there's some collaboration, communication, and strategy that has to formulate amongst the, the team members Nick, what's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite secret weapon in Valorant, and you know, ultimate fighting tool? Uh -huh. So uh, honestly, it's just playing together constantly. So we do, uh, we try to do weekly or biweekly scrims, and we play other teams, uh, basically just to help us learn. And um, basically, as as long as you're playing better teams than you are right now, you're always going to get better. So that's what we always try to do is get our butts kicked to <laughs> beat other teams. Well, then, well, then what are you going to learn from today? You guys look flawless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, in the game, they have, like, I noticed that every player has their secret weapon, right? Like their mm -hmm. ultimate fighting tool that they can use in the game. Is there one in particular that you just naturally gravitate to and love to <laughs> have in your back pocket? Um. Well, for specifically for Valor, we kind of like... We, we sometimes do like a cheese strat where we'll just rush one site and hopefully throw them off guard on one random round. And then if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then we'll usually try it again, see if they'll expect it a second time. Oh, that's funny. I mean, you know what? Hey, don't spill the, the beans on your full strategy there. It sounds like it's very, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's very good. I, I wouldn't yeah. want you to, to give the upper hand to a competitive uh, team out there. So. What about you, Omi? What's your favorite uh, weapon to yield in Valorant? Oh, I love the sniper rifle. It's called the Operator, and it's a really easy one shot to the body <laughs> with that gun. And it's uh, really yeah. popular these days. I saw that one. That yeah. Was cool. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely my favorite gun by far. It's just 
really overpowered right now and it's really fun to use. And I've, I've always liked sniping in any FPS game I've played. So I was just naturally drawn to it. Well, it's a good thing that what happens in the video game stays in the video game. I certainly want, wouldn't want you know, sniping and all that stuff happening in real life. But I was watching it and going, man, that would be freaking awesome if I had some of these tools in my own back pocket, like in real life. Yeah. But <laughs> hey, you know, it's a good escape. Well, that's awesome. I'm super happy for you guys. Congratulations on doing so well in the tournament. What was your final ranking? Uh, so we got to semifinals and we sadly got, um, we lost our semifinals match. So I think we got technically fourth. Yeah, fourth place. Fourth, fourth right. or third, depending on how like the seating works. So, well, like you said, room to grow. You gotta, you gotta lose to learn how to mm -hmm. improve and where your weaknesses are. So, I mean, you know, I heard from a really uh, strong competitor recently. I, I won't mention his name, but he's he had a quote that really stuck with me. He talked about if you want to get better, you have to double down on the things that you're not good at, and I think that whether you're in esports uh, communities, you know, gaming, mm -hmm. or you're on traditional athletic fields and courts, or even if you're just, you know, applying it to your everyday life, there's always going to be room for improvement. And I feel like in esports, you get a lot of opportunity as students to discover yourselves and your skill, the skill sets that you're really well at. Have you seen that like translated and applied to enthusiasm and energized, you know, vision for what you're learning in your degree plans at school. I mean, Nick, you're in your master's program now and you started mm -hmm. the club when you were in your bachelor, you know, degree plan. Oh, it just, when you like helping run a team, managing it and just communication, you just learn to work with so many different people. Um, and of course everyone's great, but it's just super, um, you learn a lot just about managing and just basically how to, takes a passion and just grow it into something bigger than you ever expected. That's really cool. What's your ex experience been like, Omi? Yeah, it's basically the same for me. Um, my old team, my Overwatch team, I was actually the captain of the team. So I had to, you know, manage the players, make sure they were showing up to practices on time, stuff like that. So it really helps you learn how to work with people, um, like see what they need, help understand them. And then uh, it's just a good experience makes you prepared for future leadership roles. Absolutely. You guys have a great opportunity on your hands. Very cool. What's what, what's your majors, by the way? I'm curious. Nick, what's your major? So I'm a, right now I undergraded in, undergraded, oh gosh, um, <laughs> in mechanical engineering. And then uh, currently I'm finishing up my master's in mechanical engineering as well. I just got to finish up my thesis in the fall. Very cool. No small task ahead of you. Congratulations on nearing the end and taking it to your master's level. Mm -hmm. Omi, what are you studying in school? I'm a computer science major. I am a junior right now, and I should be graduating in about three more semesters. So I'm really close. Very cool. Well, you know what? If you want to add to some of those skill sets, Extreme Network Academy at Extreme Networks, the company you know, that this show is powered by is a really cool program. It's a curriculum that's going to be having all of the, the learning track for the network IT learning experience so that you can end uh, you know, your college time with some certifications under your belt. Honestly, that's what I did, guys. I was, a, I was a, you know, in college, kind of had a Bachelor of Science degree, nothing too specific, but I got some network certifications before I ended school, and that's a big game changer. Similarly, what you guys are doing with eSports, you get a lot of applied learning experiences like you're talking about. These are aspects that are really going to help you out post-grad. So I'm really excited for you guys. And the fact that it's growing, like that you went from 20 to 400 team members. So cool. Mm -hmm. So, you know, before we wrap it up, there's some, you know, minor details that I got to know. Everybody's got an AKA. Drag slap is yours, Nick. Omi, is it Omi your AKA or? or yeah, is that yeah, that's correct. Okay, cool. So this is what you guys go by on Twitch, right? How people find you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I hear that there is like a method to the madness in picking your name. What was your inspiration for your names? Nick, I'll start with you. So um, so my last name, Palsgard, actually, if you spell it backwards, is actually pronounced drag slap. So that's where I got my username. So. Very clever, very clever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Omi, where did yours come from? Because Harish is your name, right? I don't see mm -hmm. the connection. So don't tell me yours is spelled backwards too. <laughs> <laughs> no. The Omi is actually an acronym for my old username, which was One Man Indian. 
And I came up with that when I was like 12 years old and I decided I was sick of it. So I decided to shorten it, make an acronym. And so Omi was born. Nice. Not, not a bad name. Uh, what was that uh, old man, one man Indian? One man what Indian. The, yeah. <laughs> what was the inspiration for that one? Um, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. It was just a nickname my friends had for me in middle school. Oh, those are the best. Kind of you gotta just run with those. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> All right. So what's your favorite game to play and compete in? Right now it's definitely Valorant. Obviously. Really right enjoying there. the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, Nick? For me right now it's Valorant, but my kind of like my, um, long time like favorite is uh, Counter-Strike uh, Global Offensive, super old game, been out for 20 plus years. And so that's kind of like my always fall back to, those are like yeah. my two favorite right now. Okay, so what's your, um, you tend to gravitate to the same type of games, like games that are require a lot of critical thinking, a lot of strategy and like multiple team members on playing each game or do you mm -hmm. kind of like the one-on-one -on -one type of things? I, I think generally people like the 5v5 formats right now because there's so much um, emphasis on team dynamic where it's not a single person can carry a game. It's more based on kind of um, how everyone works well together, which that makes it more way more fun. So. Yeah, it's always way more fun to win with people instead of all by yourself because like who are you going to celebrate and buy games <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Well, this has been really fun to get to know you guys. Mm -hmm. Super excited to see you guys continue to grow at Sacramento State with your eSports club. Congratulations again on your placement fourth place tonight in the ECAC eSports Summer Valorant Tournament. That's all we have for eSports Center today, everyone. Thank you for watching and make sure to tune in because we got more interviews covering this tournament next. <laughs>